Did you know a real estate contract could be contingent upon your dog? We're going to explore that and more on today's real estate podcast. Here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Elite Realty Group Podcast, where we bring you the most up-to-date, relevant real estate information you're going to find anywhere on the planet. You're going to get it right here with us, and we are glad you have tuned in for today's episode, where we're going to be discussing the common contingencies that you sometimes see in a real estate contract. I'm Mike Elkins with Elite Realty Group. Got my partner, Dave Elkins, here to discuss these contingencies. How you doing today, my man? I'm doing pretty good, Mike. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Ready to give this information did out. Did you say something about a dog? I said I did say something okay. about a dog. We're going to discuss that and much more about these real estate contingencies today because I will say that I can't put this into a percentage but it's going to be way less than a half a percent of contracts that we see come through here. You see with no, I mean, zero contingencies. Mm -hmm. There are typically always contingencies on real estate contracts. Yes. Some of those are built in. Some of those are placed in, Mm -hmm. but I think once we explore this today and get into these contingencies, that's what we get asked all the time. Can I make it, you know, can I put a requirement in here that this has to happen before I have to buy this house? Yeah. The answer to the question is yes. Absolutely. As long as the other party agrees. Mm -hmm. So we're going to dive into today, the most common ones. We're going to look first at the ones that's literally just, if you use the state approved contracts that we use here, provided to us by the state of Tennessee, these are actually already in the contract. You just have to say you're going to do them or not. Yeah. We highly recommend most of these you do them and we're going to discuss why. Then we're going to talk about the ones that you actually see people saying, Mm -hmm. okay, I need to put this in here because I want this contingent. And then we're going to talk some about the ones that it's contingent upon your dog. You can do that. So we're going to dive deep into the world of contingencies in a real estate podcast today, we or in a real estate contract, I should say, we're glad you're listening to this podcast. So here we go. Let's first talk about the what you would say proper definition mm-hmm. of a contingency. We talk about this stuff all the time because we're in real estate. We kind of know what a contingency is. But a lot of times you ask people, do you want any contingencies in right. your contract? And they're like, what is that? What is that? No, yeah. What is that? Tell me more. So if you look at it and you say, what is the definition of a contingency? Well, it's a cause that, again, is pre-written in. You can write in. It can be done many different ways. But it's a clause in a purchase and sale that's specifying an action or requirement that must be met Mm -hmm. before this contract becomes final, meaning it's executed, everybody agrees, and it is done. Right. So again, it's something that has to be met, a requirement, something has to be done that is specified in that contract for you. Mm-hmm. Let's look first at the ones that we see. These things here, they're pre-written. They're, they're in there if you use this contract. I'll dive in first. Okay. The first one is, and I think it's one, again, we see this one a ton. Mm-hmm. And it's literally financial contingencies. And I'm going to go financial contingencies, meaning on maybe the part of how you're going to pay for this. Right. And that can be two ways. You're going to pay for this in two different ways. It's going to be, you're going to be getting a loan, a mortgage to purchase this house. You've got FHA, you got USDA, you got rural development, you got VA, you got uh, conventional, conventional, you got all kinds of different loan products, mortgages. You're going to get, you literally specify it is contingent upon me getting this type, very specific, right? It's contingent upon me getting this type of mortgage financing for me to buy the house. Now it actually even goes deeper than that because in these mortgage products, you've got conventional loans. Typically you see those they're around 20% down. So you're going to get to be able to get a loan for 80% 
of the value of this house. We're going to talk about that more. Right. You got three and a half percent down. So if you get three and a half percent down, I need 96 and a half percent of this yeah. to be able to be financed. Yeah. But you literally specify in detail that I want this contract contingent upon me specifically being able to get this type of mortgage mm -hmm. to buy the home. You also have, this is going to be a cash offer, right? This is contingent upon me paying you cash. And people's like, you can still make it contingent at this point. Yeah, you sure can. Absolutely. Because where are you getting the cash? Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that sometimes when people say cash, right? That's because they're getting out of a IRA, 401k, mm -hmm. something like that. They just don't have it at their house, you know, under their mattress. Exactly. They've actually got to get it from somewhere, but right. it will be cash once they get it. Right. So that is a very common contingency that it has to be contingent upon me being able to get my hands on my cash. Sure. That can not only be your cash. That could be I'm getting cash from my parents. Yeah. I'm getting cash from my uncle. Mm -hmm. But it is a contingency that you pre-write in there. Now, that has to be satisfied. Yeah. Now, with all of these contingencies that we talk about, we're going to talk about it's a contingency. But you also see along with that contingency typically comes a time frame. Yeah. Like, we're not just going to be able to say this and wait this thing out yeah, forever and ever and forever, ever. Yeah. You're going to see... We're going to be able to show you this, satisfy this in a particular point of time. Yeah. When you look at cash, it's actually written in a contract that you'll show proof of proof. these funds yeah. that I'm getting this from this person or I've got this in the bank or I'm getting this from a 401k. Right. That's usually done within five days of the agreement going binding, meaning everybody agrees upon this. You see that. Right. With the loan you see that is typically within three days you have to apply for mm -hmm. this type of loan. Right. You're saying it's contingent upon me getting it, but you also turn right back around and say within three days I will go apply for this. Yeah, then you got 14 days. That's what I was going to go. You got 14 days that you can say, okay, it is for sure we are a go. Here. Yes, it's going to happen. Yeah, again, we're talking about state of Tennessee contracts that could vary depending on what part yeah. of the state you're or what part of the country you're yeah, in. Depending on that. where you're watching and li or listening to this podcast, that could be different. Now, I'm going to go back to that, though. Those are pre-written things in. Yeah. We're going a little bit maybe of contract writing here, but you can change that five days. What's well, going to take me about 10 days to figure this cash one out. You can change that. Yeah. I may need a little bit more time on this 14 days. Mm -hmm. You could change that. Yeah. Those dates are just kind of pre-written in there that you do. Right. However, we see the majority of the time. Those are the dates. That stay. Yeah, you, those are the time frames yeah, that stay the same. You stick to that. A lot of yeah. Because, again... As a seller, you don't want to give a infinite no. amount of time. You want to know, can these people buy my house or not? Yeah, because it's going to be tied up yeah. until that point of time, especially if you agree upon this. Right. So you kind of want it sooner than later. Yes. As a buyer, you want to make sure you've got enough time to get all this stuff done. Right. Because if you miss the contingencies, this is another thing I didn't think we would dive into, but we will. If you miss those dates mm -hmm. on those contingencies, depending upon how it's written up. Right. That could be detrimental to you as a buyer. Yeah. Specifically when there's earnest money on the line. Right. You kind of got to do things and perform in that. So the first contingency that, again, we see on almost every contract we get. Again, it's very, very, very rare. We get contracts and there's no contingency. Right. That you're always going to be dealing with them. Yeah. But the first one talking about the financial contingency of this agreement the loan or the cash and the time frame and the type of how you're going to get that. We see that often. It's very common. We see that often. Now, should you not be able to get your funds during those specified time mm -hmm. frames, because now it is a contingency, you legally can remove yourself from the rest of this contract. Right. Because you had a contingency. Right. That's the beauty of the contingency. We tell people all the time, buyers and sellers because this is a podcast that's going to be literally talking about both of them mm -hmm. um those contingencies are literally in there for protection for you right you want to make sure you do have those yes built-in protections you can put the contingencies in there and you got 14 days to get your loan i don't mean you got to wait 14 no. days As a matter of fact you're not going to right time is of the essence you want to move with some speed mm -hmm. because we're trying to close this typically in 30 to 40 days right you want to go sooner rather than later, but 
you do have those time frames and deadlines mm-hmm. that kind of keeps all this going in the right direction. Right. So the first common contingency you see in a real estate contract is the financial one. Where's the cash? What about the mortgage? So on and so forth. Right. What do you got for another one? So another another big one is the appraisal contingency. Right. Okay. Because again, especially if we're financing this house, mm-hmm. if we're if we get a loan, if there's a loan involved, then there's going to be a finan- there's going to be an appraisal contingency that goes along with that because right. the bank wants to know. Right. That what they're getting ready to give money for is sure. definitely worth that amount of money. So you're going to have to have an appraisal done. Right. So that is another very common pre-written in their contingency. So this gets missed a lot of times, though, when we come back to cash. I'm with you. Because, again, a lot of people don't realize that it's even an option mm-hmm. for you to have an appraisal Absolutely. if you're paying cash. Well, Absolutely. That's, that's on there, too. Sure. So a lot of times it's just marked as they don't want no they don't want no appraisal, mm-hmm. but that's something that you definitely if you're a cash buyer if you're representing as if you're an agent you're representing a cash buyer mm-hmm. you need to make sure that you're offering that because that right. is on the contract yeah it's a yes or no do you want it or not right but you need to you know again if I'm paying cash it's a good thing to know now we've seen here the past few years we've seen this you know. Uh, this appraisal contingency, mm-hmm. you know, even with a loan, right? That people have been paying, you know, the difference. Oh yeah, because they're, they're wanting to waive it. Yeah, they're wanting to waive that, so right. they're still having it, but it uh-huh. don't appraise for what right. the loan amount is. But the the buyer is stepping up and and paying that difference. Exactly. So that that has kind of become, you know, for a little bit that Something was kind of see. the normal. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of the normal thing because a lot of people selling their house making. Big, big chunks of money, and they would be able to take that and pay the difference. But right. appraisal, again, whether that's cash, whether that's if it's if you're getting a loan for sure, mm-hmm. you're going to have that appraisal contingency. No doubt. And I think people were putting those, waiving the appraisal contingency, because that's what they were doing. They were waiving them mm-hmm. to try to make their offer look better because they knew there was going to be 5, 10, 15 other offers on this property. Right. It just... It's one of those things that we always try to make sure people understand. If you waive it, mm-hmm. you've waived it. Yeah. You know, if, if you're buying a $300,000 house and it comes back and appraises at two hundred, dollars well, if that wasn't contingent upon it appraising, mm-hmm. then you're right. Yeah. You're, you're paying that difference. Yeah, I mean, and so do you worry about... You know, you, you've heard this, that people have said, you know, for the last little bit, people's been overpaying for houses. Well, if you waive that contingency, right? if you waive that appraisal contingency, you don't know. No. You don't know if you're overpaying no, for you the don't. house or not. No. So, again, I highly recommend right. that you make it contingent upon an appraisal. Yeah, and two things there I think you said is worth exploring more. One is waiving the appraisal. Mm-hmm. You can waive the appraisal, but still have the appraisal done. Right, sure. You just, it's not contingent. It don't matter. It doesn't have yeah. to appraise for that. Yeah. But the second one I think that we need to dive into, kind of going along with that appraisal. So that's a contingency. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got it checked. It's cash or financing. It doesn't matter. But I've checked I want an appraisal. Mm-hmm. And this, this contract is contingent upon that. What happens... If it doesn't appraise, well, I mean, there it's it's a uh, there's a lot of stuff that could happen. Sure, what's common? So what's common is is the buyer at that point mm-hmm. is going to tell the seller, "Hey, your house only appraised for let's use three hundred thousand. The house mm-hmm. was listed at three twenty five. Right. The house only appraised for three hundred thousand. The buyer at that point is going to go back to the seller, and they're going to say, "Hey." Mr. Seller House did not appraise. What can we do? Exactly. So more than likely at that point, the seller now knows proof. We have mm-hmm. proof from yes. a, an appraiser. An appraiser. That this is what your house is worth. Right. So I would say 90 some percent of the time that seller is going to reduce the price oh, yeah. to that amount. Right. And then and we'll move forward. Sure. Yeah. And you look at that and you say, like you said, you, I got an appraisal. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the big point we need to get across here about we're talking about common contingencies. That's a protection. Absolutely. That's a protection Absolutely. for this buyer. Mm-hmm. So you'll a lot of times see that seller say, well, I mean, I'm not going to be able to sell it for no more than 300. Anyway, I got an offer. These people are okay. Give me 300. I'll drop the price. Right. 
You also see that going back to what you alluded to just a little bit ago was, can the buyer just look at it and say, okay, it's, it's only appraising for 300. They want 325 and you go to the seller and they're like, no, we're not going to drop the price. Right. Can the buyer pay the difference? Sure. Yeah, you, can. you can. Yeah. That's decisions though. The protections in there for you, had you never had that contingency that none of this matters. Right. But because you have that, now you know, right. you know, that I am overpaying mm -hmm. or I'm not overpaying. Right. You do see in today's time, the reason why we suggest do this, you do see sellers right now still living in a couple of years ago. Yeah. And they're overpriced in their house. Right. And because inventory is low, you know, there's people that's saying, okay, I know it's a little high, but right. I'm going to go with it. Right. The appraisal just kind of lets you know you got a protection, some sort of protection potentially on this investment that you're getting ready to make. Right. You right. want to make sure you got them in there. And so you have this all the time where you get the buyers that ask you. So, so the seller has to at that point, the seller has to drop to that price. The seller does no, not have to. No, no. Because again, we don't know the seller's situation. They no. might have, they might need that to pay off something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Pay off the house. They sure. might need that. So you don't know what that reason is for, but no, they do not as the seller. You do not have to reduce to that price. Exactly. Now, again, if you can, by all means, you've got a real appraisal on file at this point. Exactly. So if you can, you would be smart to reduce to that price. No doubt. No doubt. So today we're talking to you about common contingencies that you find in a real estate contract. Again, the ones we're talking about here with you first, they're the ones that in the state of Tennessee, which is where we are with Elite Realty Group. These are in the contract already for you. You just have to elect whether you're going to use them or not. As always, we're probably going to suggest to you that you put these contingencies in. Should you not want to, we're also going to give you the information why right. you may not want to do that. So we've been through two so far. Let's look at the next one. So the next one I think is probably the one that is one of the biggest ones that probably people do know about. And that is inspections. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this purchase is contingent upon inspections. Yes. Now we're going to leave that broad like that because inspections can include many things. Many things. Home inspection. You could say, okay, that's whole home. Mm -hmm. You could say HVAC inspections. You could say radon inspections. You could say pest inspections. Foundation inspections. Foundation inspections. Septic inspections. But under our contract in the state of Tennessee, you elect to have inspections. Yes. Not one particular. Right. So that literally keeps everything open for anything you could be concerned about for a buyer, someone purchasing this house mm -hmm. that you may be concerned about when you select, I'm going to have inspections. Right. You're going to be covered under that umbrella of mm -hmm. all of those things, unless you would change the verbiage of that, which we would not suggest that you yeah. do. Because again, you can always say, I'm good, let's go Yeah. versus these things. The same thing with the other contingencies we've talked about, the home inspection, there's going to be a time frame there mm -hmm. that for a seller, you're getting this offer with an inspection, a home inspection contingency. Well, you're going to know within 10 days, mm -hmm. they're going to, or they have to have all of these inspections done. Right. We've talked in other podcasts, we've talked in other shows, other things that we're a part of and that we do, that if you're buying a house, we're going to highly recommend you have a home inspection. Yes. You know, we're going to highly recommend this for the protection of everything that you do. That was a conversation we had in a whole other podcast, but a very common contingency that we see in a home inspection or in a contract is a home inspection. Now, talk to us just briefly about what happens we get the home inspection done we are not satisfied with this it's contingent upon a satisfactory home inspection yeah what do we do just like the appraisal you still the buyer is going to go to the seller okay so if it's something that you know is, is a concern to you we can go back to the seller at this point and open up negotiations mm -hmm. we can say hey Mr. Seller, we need you to fix the following items that sure. were found on the home inspection. Sure. We want you to reduce the price mm -hmm. to cover us being able to do that. Right. You can escrow the money over at closing. That way you could take from the pro, you know, from your seller proceeds. Yeah. 
and pay for those repairs. Right. Again, it just opens up negotiations at that point. Right. It has to be agreed upon by both of you. Sure. Everybody's got to agree. If we're doing anything to amend this contract the way it's written, right. well, then everybody's got to agree to that. So, again, you see common mm -hmm. is a home inspection. Right. That is a common inspection. That is a common contingency that we see. Give us another one. Another contingency? A contingency that you okay, see. Okay, I was going to talk a little bit more about this. So, okay. again, this is something as a um, – we've talked about this on other podcasts, but, again – that contingency, the inspection contingency, is one of the most missed time frame contingencies. Oh, yeah. So, again, make sure that you, as the buyer, are asking your agent, how long do we have to have these inspections? Mm -hmm. When is the date that we have to do all this stuff? Sure. Because you don't want to miss that contingency. When you missed it, it's gone. When you miss it, it's gone. Yes. There's no going back to it at that point. And that goes back to that actually in the appraisal one. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the appraisal got to be done by this day. If you don't have it done by that day, you, you're essentially, it's pre-written anyways. Right. But you're just waving it at that yeah. point. Yeah. Inspections. Yeah. You've got to this point to get them done. If yeah. you don't respond and say, hey, we want something done, you're saying I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. So it, that's automatically done right? in these contracts. So you do. Dates and times. Time is of the essence yes. in the whole entire contract. Yes. So you want to make sure you're paying attention to it and your agent's paying attention to it also. For sure. Yeah. Go with the next one. The, the next one is kind of, some people look at this as being a little bit silly one, but I don't personally think it is, but no. it's about get, being able to get a clear title. Exactly. So it is contingent. But sure. The whole place is content. The whole deal is contingent upon you being able to get a clear title for that house. Exactly. What is that? That that way you know when I'm purchasing this, mm -hmm. that these people obviously have the right to sell this to exactly. me. Exactly. That it's free and clear of any... Um, what we're looking for, any, judgments, yeah, liens, liens, anything like anything. that that is against the house, it is coming to you right. with a clear, no doubt this is yours. Right. And you look at that title, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, it's more than people think mm -hmm. that because you it is contingent upon that, that you do see problems with the title. Oh, yeah. You know happens. what I mean? Like I got this property uh, from my great-grandpa, mm -hmm who got it from his great grandpa mm -hmm. and there ended up being descendants of one of those down through the line that they had rights to it also. But, right. you know, we just kind of handed it down and did these things. And when title searches start happening, they find, Hey, mm -hmm. when this went from, you know, a to B, well, there was some people in here that had rights, but they never signed that this person could have it. Right. Or, so you know what I'm saying? But nobody ever said anything about that. And it's not a problem. It's not those things. But making sure you got clear title for it, well, they're going to back up one thing and get all that fixed. Mm -hmm. You could potentially still go through with everything. Mm -hmm. You just want to make sure you coming in here as the third or fourth buyer or transfer of this title. Yep. And somebody back from great-grandpa from the great-grandpa, the cousin down through the third generation pops up and says, I got a right to this property and right. you, you got to do something. Mm -hmm. That's where you run into problems. Yeah. You've seen it where people get themselves in a financial bind. Sure. And I've got a place and I'm, I'm needing money. And I tell you, Hey man, if you give me this right here. I'll, yep. you know, old handshake deal. We'll go down here to the courthouse yep. and I'll sign it over to you. Exactly. And that's what happens. And then right. now you're ready to sell it. Right. And there's, you know, I've got, yeah. You know, people that can come back and say, mm -hmm. you know, hey, I didn't even know he sold this place. That's I actually I have say. interest in I have rights. Yes. Financial rights to that place. Right. So that's another thing you can see. So it's to me, it's a major thing. Yes. That you want to make sure that this place is free and clear when it's mm -hmm. yours. Yeah. And you have things also that, that are out there that will show up on this. You have a lot of people call them land contracts. Mm -hmm. A lot of people call them, you know, land deeds, whatever that it is that, again, the person selling the property really ain't the owner of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they, it's on a land contract from the person who actually owns it. Right. Well, if that's the case, the person who actually owns it's got to be the person that you have it, yeah. not the not, yeah. person who's in the house. Right. You also see, maybe it's our, maybe it's our area, but I would say that it goes everywhere. Going back to those handshake agreements, you know what I mean? Or I'm going to trade you 
my old truck mm-hmm. for this three acres of property you got right. over here. And we trade. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we just trade. Nothing's ever filed. Right. Nothing's ever done. I'm okay. You can do what you want to that property. Yeah, it's yours. And, I, and then, you know, the person who got the truck that gave you the property, they passed away. They had kids. But it was never officially put anywhere. Right. So you want to make sure that title is free and clear. Yeah. One other thing I want to pop up on here that you see happening has happened right here in our area. It happens all across the country. Is the person selling the property is not the true owner of the property. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's a scam. Mm-hmm. It's somebody true. the it's this or that. And that ain't the real owner of the property. Yeah. Title searches. Those out. contingencies are going to ninety nine point nine percent of the time, yeah, get that. Point. Yeah, it'll come to light. Then. Yes. So those are what you would say common ones. Mm-hmm. Those are actually the pre written ones that we see that are in our contract. Um, I think ones that you see though that are that are happen a lot that are not pre written in there. Something you've got to have your agent get in there for you. Probably the most common one that again is not pre-written is the buyer. This this agreement is contingent upon the buyer mm-hmm. selling the house that they're in. Right. Okay. Because they ain't going to have two places, mm-hmm. so they got to sell the house that they're in. To buy again, this one. dates and times are going to come in with this, but it's contingent upon the buyer selling their property before closing. Yes. Of this new property. You do see that one very common quite often. Because we get asked all the time, do I buy or sell first? And that's going to be another show. Mm-hmm. It really doesn't matter if you use contingencies in the proper way. Right. I this is agree this agreement is contingent upon me selling my house before buying yours. On the flip side of that, what's the one that goes right along with that? Which is one that again I think is overlooked a lot, but sure. it's it's contingent upon the seller sure. finding suitable housing. Absolutely. So now, we've seen it be very specific mm-hmm. that the the seller says, I will sell this house as long as I can buy this house. Yes. This one particular very specific. house. So it can be that specific that mm-hmm. it has to be, you're going to buy this house. And if I don't get that house, right. then I don't want to sell my house. Right. Or it can be that I want to be able to find another house. Exactly. That I like. Exactly. So that's, again, a, a, a lot of times a seller is afraid. Mm-hmm. to list their house because they'll say, I don't even know where I'd go. Yeah, I don't know what would happen. I don't even know what I would do. Yeah. I, I don't even know where I could go to. Sure. Well, you can list it and make it contingent upon mm-hmm. you finding That's right. the house. That you, that you find that suitable housing yeah. that you're wanting for yourself. Again, there's probably going to be a date involved with that. For sure. That way you get all that done. But there are a lot of people, a lot of people that we talk to, and they're honestly quite doing, they're doing what you said. They're sitting on the sidelines right now. They want to sell their house. Yeah. And it's a good time to be putting your house sure on the market is. across the country. Yeah. Nationwide inventory is historically low. And but these people are sitting on the sidelines because they don't know about these contingencies. Yeah, they, they don't, don't know. know I can even do this. Right. So absolutely you can do this. Everybody's got to agree. Mm-hmm. But it's something that again, we're going to recommend to people that's that's selling their house. We're going to recommend you put this in here. Again, it's a protection for you. Right. It's something that you want. Yeah. So many people think, well, I've got to sell my house and then I'm gonna have to go live with somebody. I'm gonna have to live in a camper. I'm exactly. gonna do whatever. They look at the worst case scenario. Because they don't realize that's even a possibility. Right. That, that is a contingency for them. Totally one hundred percent. Understand that. Get that. No doubt about that. Hit that so that phone goes off. So, those are common ones we see that ain't wrote in there. Right. When you look at ones, though, I'm going to throw this back to you because you wrote more contracts than me. What's some other ones? Maybe they're not the most common one, but we ain't went crazy yet. Right. But what's some that you see that you've seen in contracts before that is contingent upon? Big, big one is is that you personally have to see the house. I got you. People, this blows people's minds sometimes. But a lot of people, man, that are moving to the area mm-hmm. or whatever, they see the house. They know this is the one. I love they it. They want to go ahead, write that offer. Let's mm-hmm. get this thing, you know, kind of under contract. But it's contingent upon me personally coming and walking through the house. And exactly. 
So very, that's a very common one. Yes. A very common one. Another one is that you want the approval of others. Sure. So what is that? Maybe the husband finds the house, mm -hmm. you know, the wife's got to work. We just had this literally in a dual situation that what you're seeing, we had a person moving to our area. Mm -hmm. He was already here working. Wife was away. Mm -hmm. So he literally put both of those in there. It was contingent upon his wife approving the house mm -hmm. but coming and seeing it physically herself right you know so yeah. you could do that yeah i mean you can have a contingency for whatever you want a right. contingency to be for but that that that's a very common so again a lot of times out-of-state folks are concerned mm -hmm. they're they don't even want to get real serious because well i'm four hours away i'm mm -hmm. eight hours away if it's one that you think you want you can always make that offer, make it again, time dates, times that are always going to come back into play. Right. Here. So, uh, the seller's not going to give you a unlimited amount of time for you to come look at it. That's right. going to be something they're going to want you to do, you know, relatively quickly. Exactly. But again, they will, the sellers will work with you on right. that. You know what I mean? So if you find one and you know, it's it, make it contingent upon you personally coming and seeing it. Absolutely. That's totally fine. Absolutely. So on our way out the door, let's have a little fun. What's the craziest one you've ever saw a part of a contract? Mm, crazy. One. And not, not that it's just way out there, but you'd say like, that's odd, but I've seen it. I do remember one time that the buyer made it contingent upon. So the seller was a huge ZZ top collector mm -hmm. and the buyer made it contingent up on the seller, including all of the ZZ top memorabilia memorabilia that was downstairs that was already in the, yeah, that in the not, cave that did not work right uh, so they didn't get it they asked sure they did ask. they were trying to yeah the craziest one i've ever saw was we were selling a house uh up in green county near the airport mm -hmm. and um the buyers wanted it contingent that the appropriate commission in green county whether that be the airport commission the county commission the planning committee whoever give them a letter that they could fly their drones in the neighborhood that they were purchasing in huh. and they so they were big time these like competitive drone people oh yeah that you know do competition so they like flew drones all the time yeah but the, you know, there are rules about flying drones so close to an airport with a house near an airport. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted it contingent upon approval in a written form from those authorities that they could fly their drones in the area that they got. They ended up getting that. Right. So they were good to go with it. But that one was kind of one that you're like, I've never seen that before. Right. But it was a contingency. The seller agreed to it. Buyer agreed to it. Everybody went and got their letters. They provided it to them. No harm, no Again, foul. they're contingencies. They right. have to be agreed upon. So back to your. I'm going. I was getting ready to go back to the yeah, dog at the very beginning. Could, could it be contingent upon my dog? Sure. If you want to make it contingent upon your dog being satisfied with the fenced-in backyard, you can do it. You can ask for it. You can ask for now, it. Now the seller don't necessarily have to agree to accept that contingency. No. But you can literally ask for whatever contingency you want. Absolutely. So if you got a question, I mean, that's a, those are questions. Buyers or sellers. Yes. Have a conversation with a realtor. Oh, absolutely. Those are conversations you can have. Don't cost you nothing to have a conversation. No. If you've got questions like that, can you do this? Can you do that? Call up a realtor, man. That's exactly be glad. Right. Be glad to explain those things to you. Yes, absolutely. As always, if you're buying, selling, investing, in real estate, no matter where throughout the country, we'd be glad to connect with you. Again, we have a network of realtors all across the country. And no matter where you are, we would be glad to serve you and help you in your real estate journey. This has been the common contingencies that you typically see in a real estate podcast provided to you today. This information by your friends at Elite Realty Group in Morristown, Tennessee. We hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe. Share it out. On whatever channel that you are watching us on, we would greatly appreciate that. Be watching for more content coming from your friends here at Elite Realty Group. And until we see you next time, this has been the Elite Realty Group podcast. We hope you guys have a great and blessed day. We'll see you next time.